From outside of the hardcore space enthusiast community, SpaceX's transporter missions can be considered one of the many rather typical launches of Elon Musk's rocket company. But if you follow the industry closely, then you know what you're watching when a Falcon 9 transporter ascends into the heavens are the hopes and dreams of dozens of small sat launch companies coming down to Earth. And maybe dozens is being too conservative because in a study done by NewSpace released this month, they found 200 launch vehicles that fit the criteria of a small launcher. In Traction, a company that tracks startups, they list 140 companies in their small launch category. And with those stats, you have to start wondering if the market can really support so many participants. Rocket Lab CFO Adam Spice at this year's Small Stats Symposium expressed doubt with a controversial quote which said, People underestimate how difficult the launch business really is. I think we're at the beginning of the bloodletting of aspirational launch companies. It would become a prophetic take on the industry because since he uttered those words, Astra's space stock has dropped over 90% and Virgin Orbit has gone bankrupt after starting with an almost $3 billion market capitalization, both having technical difficulties with their launch systems. And these are just the publicly traded companies, and no doubt the smaller privately owned ones are feeling the pressure of SpaceX's transporter capabilities. In a parallel to Elon's other company, Tesla, SpaceX leverages price to attract business. For example, the Tesla Model 3, after numerous price cuts, can be had for about $32,000 after incentives, which would put it at at least $15,000 cheaper than a BMW 3 Series. Now let's do a cost comparison in rocket terms now. If you were to have Rocket Lab's Electron take your satellite to orbit and you utilize the entire payload capacity of 300 kilograms, it would cost you around seven to seven and a half million dollars. If you were to hitch a ride on the SpaceX transporter mission, 300 kilograms of payload would cost you just $1.65 million. This is a considerable savings of 78%. You can see the problem that small launch companies are facing. And not to mention, SpaceX has been known to carry 50 to 100 or more satellites per mission. Spice from Rocket Lab had commentary on SpaceX's pricing scheme by saying, I think the fact is they suppress prices in the market. I think the fact is they take in volume off the market. That's a reset that really wasn't there in the model even only a few years ago. Kurt Blake, formerly of Space Flight Inc., added his thoughts during this week's Satellite Innovation Conference referencing SpaceX undercutting other companies by huge margins and said, they definitely control and have a dominant position in the market. I think the real question is pricing. What is their cost and why so low, so dramatically low? I don't think they had to go that low to have a commanding share of the market that had to have a huge chilling effect on any other money flowing to startup launch companies. Even if these small launch companies could provide an on-demand service or launch directly to a specific orbit, it's really hard to convince a company to spend four times more money, especially considering these smaller satellite companies might not have the financial backing of government organizations in light of the one-third of Rocket Lab's missions from the beginning of last year having been for government entities. It's not that fighting for contracts from NASA is lowbrow, because if it wasn't for cargo missions to the International Space Station, or funding for a crewed mission, SpaceX wouldn't be the company we know it is today, and I doubt there would have been a rocket industry in the private sector without SpaceX existing. And it's no surprise, when money gets tight in the economic situation the world finds itself in now, that startups are having trouble staying in business. From NASA's perspective, having a few launch companies at our disposal is of national security interest. In an article on SpaceNews.com published today, called Government Funding Blunt's Impact of Private Investment Decline, they quote Don Clausen, the CEO of ST Engineering iDirect, who appeared on the aforementioned conference and said, We do see some softness in the market because people think interest rates are going to remain higher or rise. Customers outside of the United States are also concerned that a strong dollar will reduce their buying power. So, if the private market can't fund or become customers of these rocket companies, the US government has stepped in to fill the gap, increasing their spend by 20% this year, but also are switching to an acquisition style more similar to that of commercial models, which means less regulation and requirements. In what might be an embarrassment to our military industrial complex's attempt at hypersonic technology, we are seeing another branch of our government sending funds to small launch companies, and of course, it's our armed forces. Firefly Space was tapped by the US Space Force to demonstrate the ability to provide short turnaround launches to orbit in response to a national security threat with a mission named Victus Knox. Rocket Lab, being a leading launch provider and having moved operations to the United States of America, which is a requirement for defense spending, worked with a confidential government customer to prove its suborbital hypersonic capability, and it was aptly named HASTE, which is an acronym for Hypersonic Accelerator Suborbital Test Electron. Both missions were regarded as successes, so these two companies are likely to survive the uncertain times of the small launch economy. At the end of the day, I think SpaceX providing cheaper, reliable, and routine access to space 
is a positive for the community and its customers. Making something more affordable shouldn't be looked at like a conspiracy to bankrupt your competitors. I feel it's more representative of not just first mover advantage, but really it's the scale or volume of launches they're able to do. This year alone, SpaceX has launched 74 times and Rocket Lab just nine times. If I can draw one more automotive comparison, let's go back to the early 1900s. Henry Ford revolutionizes the way cars are made in 1913 with the assembly line. At that time, there were over 250 car companies in the USA, and because Ford was able to scale up his production and then pass on the savings to his customers, and in turn create a business that now has a large financial barrier to entry, those 250 car companies became just 44 by the next decade. 